shall we start at the top with schema hero does anyone want to print correct my pronunciation <laughs> This is Anything? basically a single person project at the moment, which is so I, I think it's the first single person project we've really seen, which is interesting. And this is that person, I can see replicated.com associated. Yeah, there are a bunch of commuters from the replicated to this project. Okay. Wow. Okay. There's one person with all it, almost every commit mark okay. with 362 commits. And then there's a couple of other people with a very small number of commits. Yeah, you're right. It's 300 and then 20. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily see that as a problem. No, no. Given that there's no. evidence of collaborate, like if it was truly one person and like in a personal repo, then I might definitely put, say it's a problem. No, I, th I, I mean, I think that coming here to get more people to contribute is a is a worth worthy way of using Sandbox particularly as well. Yeah, well, then, and then all the other thing I would say is like in a lot of projects, a lot of projects are one or two commit or heavy, especially in the beginning, because they're the primary developers. And, that's just how they're that's how they're rolling so um yeah anyway it meets the sniff test to me anyway do we know anything about They seem to have all the boxes ticked, I think, don't they? Well, and they, and they seem to be, I quite like this, why do you want to contribute your project to the CNCF question? Seems like a completely uh, decent response to that. Yeah, I mean, it seems like all the right things. I mean, I suspect there's a startup behind this thing somewhere, but you know, it's replicated.com or whatever. But it's cool. Yeah, they have like an installer product. So I don't think this is something they necessarily sell. Uh, it's just part of their solution. Oh, yeah. There you go. Okay. Anyone got any more comments or shall we do a vote? Let's do it. So for those who haven't done this before, we just um, do it in the chat and you can type your plus one or, or minus one or whatever you want to put. <laughs> Cool. Next one is Cloud Development Kit for Kubernetes, CD Kates. This comes from AWS by the looks of it. It has a very clear scope. Uh, it's like Pulumi for Kubernetes. Good support. Has anyone looked at the relationship with CDK and whether it's independent? And I mean, that's what is my, I didn't take a look at it in detail, but that was my kind of 
curious question was, is it, is it independent of CDK that it can go in its own direction as a project without being, because CDK is not a CNCF project? Is CDK AWS? Yes. It, it appears, to, I mean, at first glance, it appears to be independent, um, although it's a little bit tricky to know, like deeply. Um, but, but certainly nothing in the docs, on the, uh, even on the GitHub page, seems to indicate that it's, there's a tight relationship there. Um, and then saying, hang on, I, I see there, hang on, it is based on, it says, it is based on design concepts and technologies behind the AWS Cloud Development Kit, and it can interoperate. So that sounds like we'll be using it as a library-ish. Sounds like he's in some kind of really noisy machinery. <laughs> Sorry, is that, uh, I, I've is, muted there's you because nice? there's a bunch. Sounds of like noise. a lawnmower okay. or something. <laughs> it's my fan. I think it's the fan on my computer. Sorry, I will. I'll switch. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. <laughs> that is some fan. <laughs> Liz, you're muted, and I'm not sure how. Oh, it was my own fault. There you go. <laughs> I thought if I was going to criticize Brendan's fan noise, I thought I should make sure I was looking after my own. <laughs> um, yeah, so any other thoughts or comments or concerns about CDK? This seems like a pretty interesting idea. Um, all right, should we move to a vote on it? Am I better now? Yes. A little better. A little or a lot? It's a lot a better, lot. but not yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's the lawnmower is quiet. Yeah. But you can still actually hear some. You can still hear some. It's kind of like a light That's... background noise, like it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Odd. I wonder if that's, I wonder if it's my laptop. I don't know. It's All right. Sorry. Okay. CD Kates is done. Athens is up next. This is from Yahoo. Uh, am I the only one who don't see the alignment with existing open source, oh, CNCF and open source projects? Is that column empty? I guess it's optional. Now I see something. I okay. see as we move to the zero trust network model, column J, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Or, oh, there's another one. Yeah, it's very, it's very, it's very similar, but... 
it's all right. I would love to know, I mean, they've listed Spiffy and Spire as similar projects. It would be interesting to kind of hear the, you know, why, what, what this does that Spiffy and Spire, Spire don't do. I mean, maybe, Maybe the answer is there is a huge amount of overlap, but they have been using Athens for a while. And looks like the repository was created four years ago, but it's probably private. I think it's been, yeah, it's been used for a long time, as far as I know. I mean, it it talks about Kubernetes integration. I. I you know, this is probably one of the least Kubernetes, it's not, not necessarily it's a problem. It is just being one of the least Kubernetes mm -hmm. native projects on the list. It, it's just been around for a long time. So would we like to understand more what it uh, what differs the project from Spiff and Spire? The angle or yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure of the differences yet. I mean, they both use 509 certificates uh, <clears throat> authentication. I don't think it's a bad thing if they overlap, but it'd be really nice to have um, some more uh, of an understanding. Yeah, just curious. I, th I think I agree. I think, you know, we, while we have the, you know, multiple projects is fine, multiple solutions to a problem is fine, but I think we, we want to, I think we should have some understanding of what the strengths and weaknesses are of potentially competing projects. Yeah, and I also Maybe think- I also think these kind of discussions, you know, kind of almost encourages them, forces them to clarify their positioning, and it actually helps in in, in adoption. You know, once once they become sandbox, so at least folks coming in from a Kubernetes background and CNCF background can better understand what how you know why they should check out this project. Yeah. Uh I'm also really curious if there's like some sort of spec they plan on creating or are following. Um, it's nice that Spiffy has a spec. Not required, just curious. Yes, I, I agree. It would be interesting to understand if there is any, I'm gonna guess there's no relationship with that spec because they seem to predate spiffy but uh yeah it would be good to understand that i think i'm also intrigued by the rbac that they have whether that's integrated with like kubernetes rbac or a whole other mechanism not that it has but to be to it supports it, lots of non-kubernetes runtimes so I just, it doesn't seem as it is i mean Hmm. Can you hear me now? Yes. Cool. Oh, um, exactly. I mean, all kinds of auto and all kinds of audio challenges this morning. Um, I also noticed it looks like maybe they have a little bit of overlap with cube to IM, and it looks like there's a, there's some specific stuff around AWS, um, it, which isn't bad necessarily, but it seems like it may be. It feels a little bit like it's a sort of pre-cut solution that they're looking to put out there rather than something that's being incubated at some level. And I feel like that's a little, um, I don't know, it feels like it might be a, a little odd uh, to put something that's fully formed into Sandbox. Yeah. 
think is that the goal for sandbox is like you just want to put it in the neutral IP space and you want to kind of throw it in a place where other people can collaborate. Is it bad that it's, you know, mature if that's all they really want from it? I mean, it's not terrible, but at some level, like if it's not, like I worry about it being a dumping ground, you know, where, I mean, maybe another way of saying that is like, I wonder what the plan forward is, right? Like, is this something that they're actually using or is this something that, like, what's the motivation? Like, it, it, I guess in an incubating project, it's very clear to me what the motivation of putting it in uh, neutral IP is, which is gr build, grow community. This right. looks like something that's in production usage by Yahoo. Yeah. And so given that, I wonder, like, what what are they hoping to get out of the CNCF? Fair question. I mean, they've answered the question by saying they want to work with others in the community to evolve Athens in you know sort of the normal way um so it sounds on the face of it as though it's being contributed to uh, you know mm. but but I, I i do hear what you're saying about sort of mature projects i mean maybe maybe they want to contribute it so they can get more integration with things like spiffy yeah, yeah. maybe they want to evolve it to be more cloud native than this as a forcing function for them. Yeah. Yeah, but I will say that I've also seen, and I don't mean that, that this is an example of this, but I've also seen projects that have that have been defunded that people kick out into open source as a way of keeping them alive right, within companies. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that that's not what's happening. I mean, and I don't necessarily think it is what's happening here, but I would I. And maybe actually we need to rephrase the, the question or, you know, like some, some question around like, oh, no, there is the why do you want to, never mind. Here's the why do you want to contribute? So I thought we hadn't asked that question, but never mind. And it looks like they do, I mean, they do state that they want to evolve the project, so. I guess that's enough for me to, or I don't know, is that enough for us to kind of trust like, hey, like that's gonna happen? Yeah. I don't, it looks I like a pretty mind. active project, just looking at the code frequency graph on. Yeah, on and it does actually say used at scale. So it sounds like it is actually still used inside of Yahoo slash Verizon. So it's not gonna get dumped. Um, and Yahoo was like super early to containers and stuff. So it'd just be interesting to have that type of a company um yeah a project into cncf that's nice yeah i mean i guess i don't see a lot of damage coming from putting it in cncf so in that sense like may as well right like they're, it's not like they're going to go monetize this thing you know or like True. you know start touting that they, people should adopt their sandbox project or whatever do we want to ask them as Chris suggested in the chat, we could ask them for a bit more information on their kind of spiffy spire differences. Yeah, that'd be nice. Just to understand the project a little bit more. That's all. All right, should we do that and not hold a vote on that one? Anyone object? We Move on to the next one. And the next one is Cert Manager. Woo! Well, Cert Manager. <laughs> Pop soap and a champagne <laughs> bottle. I'm so happy this is here. Plus one for me. I don't know if that was obvious. Okay. <laughs> it's in here, big fan. Would anyone like to make any comments or? discuss or should we go to a vote? I think vote is fine. Just just for posture. Just I don't even think there is a discussion necessary, but just for posture, it's really nice 
to see CERT manager in Sandbox and so many CNCF projects and ecosystem projects and people in our ecosystem like rely on this tool. So long overdue. Yeah, really agree. It's great. Okay, the next one is if the next one is too big to fit on my enormous screen. How has that happened? I think it's um, Open Cruise. <laughs> Th this is the one we talked about before, right? That's correct. This is a reapply. And this, this is the one that we asked the Kubernetes steering committee how they felt about it. And they seem quite keen because I think last time we discussed it, we were wondering whether it made more sense as a Kubernetes subproject, and the steering committee said, no, we think it stands alone as a separate project. I think I also had a question around the scope of this project and like where the boundaries are. Because uh, it just it seems like it's a lot of components. Yeah, I think I'm trying to remember where I saw, I, I'm pretty sure I did see an answer to that because it was a discussion around like, is this all, you know, is this a home for all CRDs? And the answer was no. Um, um and I think in other respects, it, you know, had all the right links and bits and pieces, didn't it? Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it looks they presented to SIG app um, and or SIG architecture and SIG app delivery. And the um, response on the why do you want to contribute question, I think, is very good. You know, it's it's, it's very cognizant of people being not necessarily able to adopt it if it's associated with one big company like Alibaba. Any other comments or should we move to a vote on that one? All right, let's do it. Okay, if I'm driving my spreadsheet right, I think the next one is Tinkerbell. Did we talk about this at some point? They presented to the C grant time uh, about a month ago. And I know I've seen this name before. <laughs> it is. And they've put a um, similarity with um, Metal Cubed and a couple of other options as well.
Great name. Any comments or thoughts, or should we do a vote on Tinkerbell? I think it's a great project um, that targets a very interesting use case of a bare metal provisioning. Um, How does it compare to metal cubed? I guess to some extent it doesn't matter too much. This implementation is uh, is different. I believe uh, Metal Cube uses the um, I forgot the name of that uh, OpenStack library. Yeah, I think the goals are similar. Metal Cube uses was that uh, Triple O? Oh no, someone opens it's ironic. Ironic. I think is the name of it. Ironic. Metal <laughs> also has integration with plus three API of Kubernetes. Um, that is implementation, implementation details, but the goals are similar. But Tinkerbell, I mean, it came from, I think it came from Packet, which was yeah. Yeah. a fantastic service. So, so I yeah. I've never used, I mean, I used Packet a lot. I never used yeah. this project in isolation, but I suspect it's pretty good. Should we do votes? And then stanza. Oh, this is interesting. It's a Replacement for fluent D and fluent bit. It's a very new project. Uh, I think it was created in July this year. It also talks about aligning with open telemetry. It does currently have 23 stars on GitHub, which does suggest it's pretty, you know, hasn't set the world on fire. I mean, it was created in July, in July this year. Um, there are just, uh, so far there are three contributors, three active contributors. Yeah. But the claim is like modern replace, modern replacement. <laughs> for other projects and you're just three month old project. I mean, uh, I don't know if, I, if we should be concerned. Mm. Yeah, I feel like we should push back a little maybe and just ask for, I mean, I hate to ask for sort of a min bar, but like it does feel a little bit like it's not, like it, it doesn't have a ton of momentum there right now. There's, there's a few places in their application where they talk about like interest with within open telemetry. Mm -hmm. And I would have expected that interest to kind of, like one of the artifacts of that interest would be a lot more stars than 23. It seems like one of the major selling point is uh, it's written in Go. Yeah. Which is a lovely programming language, but I don't know that I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why Fluent Bit is 
you know, perhaps more, you know, has some advantages over Fluent D because it's, I think Fluent D is Python or Ruby or something, whereas Fluent Bit is C. So yeah. there's a performance uh, implication there. Yeah. I feel like if only they just said it's a fluent bit a you know, replacement written in Go that people would be able to understand it better. <laughs> All this other stuff, it's really hard to quantify. I think that is largely what they are saying, but it's-, it's I know, but it's buried, it's me. buried in the middle. Yeah. I think that's the real differentiator. So if you, I mean, if someone asks me if it's a good, you know, replacement written in Go, is that worth a try? I'd say yes, but I, then again, I have no idea how, given this is such a new project. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not obvious that they need to be in the CNCF to drum up more interest in this. Yeah. I, I would also right. say that like, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just to know that so there's no issues opened by people who aren't contributors, which suggests and that no one's trying it out. I was also going to observe that their project boards, I was looking at their project boards, their project boards are a little thin in terms mm. of roadmap. I mean, there's some stuff that like, and it's some sort of issue, but it was like 10, 10 ish kinds of projects on the next yeah. release. It's yeah. just, it doesn't feel super. Yeah, and in fact, most of them were all written by one, one person. Yeah. So like, it just it feels a little bit early. I, I think I think what we should maybe communicate back is like, directionally seems to make sense. Cloud native makes sense, um, but it, it's just su super early, and you need to spend another six months drumming up, you know, interest and usage. Yeah, I I, I would have a concern. I think that. Perhaps this is a, a startup hoping to generate marketing buzz around themselves by having a project accepted. Yeah. I mean, that said, I think the goal, I mean, Fluent, either Fluent or Log, Logstash, like they're both kind of bloaty programs. So like, and written in Ruby. Uh, so like, it's not a bad thing to replace it. Um, but uh, yeah, it feels a little bit early. Yeah. Do we want to vote on it for now, or uh, or perhaps I should put it another way: Does anybody want to hold a vote to say? I feel like it's we don't like we don't need to tell them we rejected it. I think we just say we think it needs more time. And I wish there was a way yeah. in the vote to be sort of like zero. <laughs> Can I vote zero? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel zero about it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to vote negative one because I'm not like down on it. I just think that it needs more time. Agreed. More time, more interest, more. Yeah. All right. Yes, yeah, so let's ask them to reapply in future, Amy. I think we have some guidelines somewhere about six months or something, don't we? We do. And I can point to it. All good. Great. Praviga, is Praviga, Praviga? Praviga, so they were, they applied for incubation, but, and I reviewed them and basically told them they didn't have enough users and users. And so they decided to apply for Sandbox. Um, so, um, which I thought they weren't gonna do for a bit and then they decided they were, they were happy with that. So I think, um, I mean, they're, they're trying to compete with Kafka, but they, have, they really need user momentum, but the project's been around and it's relatively mature as a project and it's used in, internally and by kind of customers, but not much externally. Um, they've just launched a Rust version as well, just a couple of days ago. This is, it was very Java based, but anyway, doing some Rust work as well. I think the um, storage, six storage took a look, didn't they? And yeah, that, so they, they, they recommended it, so. Yeah. 
and they're interested in doing much more integration with Kubernetes and things. So they, that's why they very much, it's a very much Kubernetes oriented project in their view and they, that's why they want to be in CNCF. Any other comments or thoughts before we do a vote? Vote for Pravega. Pravega, sorry, I'll, I'll learn to say it right. <laughs> All right, Kyverno. I wonder whether this is a project in its own right or is it uses does he use Rego? No. No, in fact it's they actually salt. explicitly explicitly yeah, say yeah. that that their one of their values is not using Rego. Yeah, it's an alternative. I mean, I think we've we've had people saying that they would like uh, to explore other options for policy. Um, so, kind of sympathetic. It's, it, it seems quite <laughs> YAML seems a very verbose way of specifying policy to me. But <laughs> I guess yeah. I'm, I'm on the I like Rego side of the world <laughs> personally. But yeah, um, it it seems to have you know, above the bar participation and interest as well. So, you know, whether whether it succeeds or not is not really for us to judge, but um, but it does seem to be, you know, activist. It doesn't have a ton of contributors, but it has more than say like the last one we looked at. And it has, well. Does it have more than? More than Provega. Oh, sorry, not sorry. The, I meant the one before that. Uh, more than um, uh, the the one that we kicked back to people. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The stanza. Stanza. Yeah. Um. So it has reasonable activity. Um. They've been able to garner some interest. There's 50 forks. I mean, so they they garnered some interest somewhere along the line. I know um, I have come across them in the um, like Kubernetes SIG security, I think they're involved in. I, I don't see what looks like a lot of like user issues in there. Well, maybe a few in their issue queue. Not that that necessarily matters. But as I look through their issue queue, it's mostly it's mostly a project board rather than in, than end user issues. But yeah, it's early days, so probably doesn't really matter.
Yeah, I, d I think personally I'm having a little bit of trouble dissociating. Yeah, the kind of the rego question <laughs> from like actually, you know, they seem to be going about things the right kind of a way. Maybe they're going to prove themselves right through writing policies in this way. I'm yeah. I, I kind of wonder how you really combine policies and things. I mean, what the? I don't know actually. I mean, does it have a? Does it have a, a, a model that you can not make mistakes in? Because that was, I mean, there's some issues with that that we went, raised on the security evaluation for uh, OPA as well. That is. That feels like a little bit of a high bar for Sandbox, though. Yeah, no, it's completely. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. No, I think that Sandbox is probably a good place to look at those things rather than. Yeah, I mean, it I certainly seems to me like they're doing all the right things and they have, you know, it's not like they're lighting the world on fire, but but it's not like it's three people in their garage either. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think diversity in the space is good if only to push OPA to do better, right? True. So I think that I, I like that as well. Um, they're also, you know, decent. They're they're associated with Nermada. It looks like, um, so it looks to me like they're not going to like super CNCF. Hey, look, we're sandbox about this project either. Right? It it feels like it's going to be a little more open than just hey, our startup needs this thing to go. Um, yeah, I think I agree with you. They look like they're they're wanting it to move into a neutral space for good reasons. Yeah. yeah. And it's not the only product in Nermada. Like it, it will be a part of the thing. It's not the only thing, and so they, I don't, I don't see them like getting too noisy about being in Sandbox. Better not. They incur the rust. <laughs> Right. They need a better logo, though, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Should we put That's that definitely a, something uh, that can be fixed in Sandbox. I, I, I was going to say, is that... Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Should we, uh, should we do some votes for Kyverno? And the last one on the list is Dataset Lifecycle Framework. I'm not sure I'm uh, satisfied with the answer that they gave for differentiation from the existing COSY project that's underway. Um, I think uh, the answer appears to be as soon as that becomes viable, we'll, we'll stop this project. This is um, their answer in column M. Is that what you? Uh, I believe it was. Let me see. Yes, column yes. M. Is Cozy going to be uh, 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 going to be mature soon? I I'm actually not familiar with that. Uh, they've gotten CAP approval, uh, and they're working towards getting a uh, POC uh, completed by the Kubernetes 120 timeframe, and then an alpha in the 121 timeframe. Oh, so it's so actually it's, part of upstream Kubernetes, I see. Right, right. Okay, cool. right. 
I mean, I must say this when when I when I look at this project, it looks kind of thin because because you know it, it it it's cool in some way because it's using Kubernetes as a as like an app platform to, to with with a database to to kind of encapsulate all these other concepts. So that's actually kind of cool. But if it's if it's going to be in but given NFS and S three are such fundamental concepts in infrastructure. If it's going to be captured as part of Kubernetes storage API, then there's really <laughs> we should probably at least wait till see see how that thing plays out. And this project still seems pretty thin right now. That's my impression. Yeah, it's another one with a fairly small looking level of excitement to judge by. There is a release valve if you wanted to push them to another organization in the Linux Foundation. We do have this LFAI and data organization, which is kind of all data people, AI people. So this could be a better fit there, but it's it's your call. Well, the other thing I, th I, th I, th I worry a little bit about is it looks like it might be a research project. Right? I think it's uh, at IBM Research. Uh, yeah, it's, it's from IBM it. Research. Yeah, it looks like they got a grant. Like at the very bottom, it was funded by the EU. Um, so I worry a little bit about it being more of an academic project than a legit uh, end user facing product, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I yeah, the FAQ so links just... kind of three people, but not two of them are just kind of interested or close to similar proposals and only one of them is running a POC, so it just seems that they are very far from having actual users. I mean, maybe the right answer I'm here is- I'm having trouble to... interpreting oh. that sentence that Saad um, highlighted before about when the cozy interface becomes part of Kubernetes, we will stop maintaining and directly support Cozy. I don't, are they saying we'll stop maintaining the whole project or they're saying they'll stop maintaining? So there's a little bit more in the fact where they say, uh, when the Cozy interface, we will stop maintaining and directly support Cozy for creating PVC for buckets in object stores. So I think what they mean is the framework stays, but instead of talking to CSI direct, the CSI plugin directly, they're gonna to talk to the Cozy interface. But I don't know very much about it, so if I didn't make any sense, Saad should tell me I'm not making any sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Okay. Then what else? What else is left? I thought all this is is a is kind of a you know is a is a, is a YAML interface to S3 and NFS provisioning. That's what it feels like to me. <laughs> I think it's automatic PVCs. It sounded like. Right, like you just pointed at a bucket and automatically a whole bunch of PVCs are created. But I'm not sure. So you can say data set, basically. You can say, hey, you know, like if, and I can imagine like if I'm a scientist and I don't know anything about volumes, but I know that I've uploaded a whole bunch of, you know, data files, I just want to point it at something and be like, make, make go, you know? Um, it sounds like that's what they're aiming at. So it runs a so it runs an NFS gateway on S three. No, that's no, no. It 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 like introspects. So it goes and it introspects S three, or it goes and it introspects oh. the NFS, and then it just creates a whole bunch of volumes. At least that's my understanding. Uh... How does how does S three turn into a Kubernetes volume? I'm confused. I think they use CSI for that. No, but how do they? I mean, it doesn't Kubernetes volume has to be a block device or a file system? So how does S3 turn into a block device or a file system? Uh, well, I don't know. There's an S3-based CSI, so I assume that it does something. I don't, I don't know the details. Okay. Um, but in the fact, you can see that there's this um, is that, uh, maybe there's a, there's a CSI game. implementation for S3. Um, I mean, you can. It could be using Fuse. I don't know. Yeah, it could be using like one of these HTTP. It says that it's using Fuse. Yeah, I mean Fuse S three is a thing. So yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. That's probably it. So it's it's basically running a gateway on 
nice. Um, and it sounds like effectively this is a way that you could sort of create a meta set of volumes based on some storage backend. I don't know. It's a pretty thin use case in my mind, but I, I kind of get it, I think. Like if you're a scientist and all you want to do is run does, an R. Does Cozy, uh, uh, Sa, does Cozy cover this as well? Like turning? No, so Cozy's focus is not taking object and turning into blo a blocker file. It's just focused on surfacing uh, uh, object directly into the containers in kind of a standardized way uh, so that it becomes easy to consume. Actually, CSI S3 sounds actually sounds actually kind of interesting. It is. <laughs> yeah, CSI S3 is uh, basically just a fuse driver uh, in front of an object store. And so from what I can tell, this is kind of taking all of those use cases and, and trying to make them easy to use, I guess. Uh, yeah, I would suggest looking at the cube flow like in the table of contents over on the right hand side, there's this like model storing and serving the DLF. I think that would give you a better, gives you a better example of, of what they are, how they're thinking about it. What do you all think of uh, Chris's suggestion about the um, LFAI data foundation? Personally, I think I would kick them back for six months and just say, hey, talk to us in six yeah. months. Because if they're dead, because yeah. like there's multiple yeah. questions about how they evolve, and I feel like there'll be a lot more clarity. I mean, to be fair, if, if, if we think that they are genuinely kind of cloud native, it, you know, I'm not quite sure how to articulate this, but- No, I think-, I, th I think I think Liz, I, I don't think this is a AI uh, data kind of thing. I mean, the use cases you're talking about here are, I think, are more generic. So, so yeah. I, the conclusion is, you know, there's this cozy thing, and then, so it's sorry, CSI for S3 is that just a third-party project they're using, or yeah, they, it's, it's a third-party thing they're using. Yeah, so so then they're just packaging because if they just did that, that would actually be interesting. They're not packaging. No, they're not packaging. They're um, they're making it easier for you to reference. Like you don't have to deal with PVCs right. or anything like that. It's an admission controller, basically. That's right. That's right. It's kind of like the service mesh for your data, <laughs> I guess, at some level. <laughs> um, I think it certainly has potential. It just seems <laughs> seems quite confusing and quite early. Yeah, well, that's why I would like put that service mesh for data. That's very compelling. I think. Well, absolutely. I know, but that's why I can get things funded from VCs. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they can only get grants. Um, uh, but but I, I think it's worth just telling them, hey, look, like interesting, but there's not enough there. There, you need to spend six months and see. Because if like in six months nothing's changed, then it's very clear that it's dead and if in six months they have it's they say that they're a service mesh for data then like then maybe it's a thing no this is actually one of our second application focus oh, is it uh-huh uh -oh. i don't know if that changes your calculus at all i am happy to be able to say reapply in future for spring review um because that is in fact an answer but does anybody remember what we said last time <laughs> Yeah, I think we were asking them for clarification on their differentiation from Cozy. Okay. So in that time, the uh, you know the activity is not you know hasn't set the world on fire. Do we think that they are at a disadvantage by not being in the sandbox in terms of collaboration? You know, would that, I mean, they're, they're an IBM project. Mm. Do we think there are potentially people who would collaborate but are not doing so because it's associated no. with a particular company? I don't think so. So here's my thing about this is this looks like something that you would install on a Kubernetes cluster that's being used for data science. And in that context, like nobody cares about this stuff because you're just trying to make the scientists' jobs possible. All right. This doesn't feel like something that would be you know, adopted into a cloud where competition would be important or something like that. So like, I think the fact that they can't point to a bunch of people using it is an indication that maybe they're not quite nailing their use case or they're not quite nailing their 
their PR around it. Just describe it. They're gonna market it better. Service mesh for data. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's what, maybe we should, maybe Amy. That's what you should just tell them. Say like you know, go spend six months in the service mesh for data. <laughs> go. Yeah. No I want to cut. If anybody starts their startup with that, I want to cut. Anybody on this call? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it, it sounds I, like uh, leaving it at reapply in future for spring review, but also letting them know that the uh, LFAI group exists might be helpful. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And I think we are still looking for, for I mean, the, 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 if we asked them for clarification on Cozy and what they came back with was when Cozy exists, we're going to deprecate a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure that's clarification. That's just saying they're going to use it. I don't know. They, but anyway. it, it's another reason to think, well, you know, if, if they reapply, we might have a bit more understanding of this whole, how it shakes out yeah. with Cozy. Yeah, I think so. Also, there were seven PRs in the last month, which is pretty light. Mm. Yeah. Anybody object if we tell them? Well, like Amy said, come back again in the future. But by the way, there is also this other foundation. Okay, let's do that then. Our next review oh, We're be... bang on time. Kind of, yeah, close enough. Our next review will be uh, in January if we want to be able to keep with the two month cadence. I think she's just six months. I mean, okay. oh, you mean for the sandbox? Yeah, for sandbox for reviews. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The next time we go through the spreadsheet would be in two months, which yeah. I think is good. Yeah, with the holidays, it makes sense. I might I'll schedule started... it towards later in January than earlier, given because, like, I know people might not be back in the office and things. So um, I'll, I'll say we're tracking towards January. Okay. Awesome. All right. Uh, watch for an email from me with like results in here, and then I'll push it out towards the main list. Good to see you all. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.